very good morning all welcome to this uh, webinar on standardized test presentation <clears throat> we will we'll allow just three to four minutes of time for people more people to join in and then we'll get started thank you this is something about my organization saturn paper personally i have spent 24 plus years into test prep and multiple dimensions of test prep as of now, we conduct all our courses in the one-on-one -on -one mode and uh, in an environment where everyone is going online, given the current situation, there is one organization which has been exclusively online for four years now, offering almost five years, in fact, and offering customized courses, customized curriculum to each, each individual student. Allow me just a few minutes to get more people to join in and we'll be on air in the next three to four minutes. Thank you. The online mode of instruction enables us to work with a wide variety of students. So as of now, we work with the students as far east as Japan to students as far west as Mexico. We work with students from across different time zones. And all, all this is highly personalized, highly customized, keeping the parents in the loop always. So the parents, uh, if you ask me, are very, very important stakeholders of the entire process. And we go out of our way to make sure that all of them are included with you know all possible information at all points in time. The COVID-19 has thrown, you know, the world completely out of gear. And all the standard plans towards college applications have gone haywire. I've received lots of, lots and lots of questions from students and parents over the last 15 days as to what happens here and how do they plan their move. It's been further compounded by the fact, you know, that the schools are closed down, some of them doing online classes, some of them not doing online classes. So. I mean, what do the students do at such juncture? That is what also we'll be addressing today through the webinar. End of the webinar, I'll be glad to take any questions that any of you might have. All right, so let's get started. And uh, let me move on to the First slide for the day, we'll be spending about 30, 35 minutes with a presentation, maybe 40. And then should you have any questions, I'll be glad to take them up. My name is Abhinav Garg, and let me let me share my video here. I hope all of you can see me now. And I'm a CEO at Saturn Paper, which is based out of Noida in New Delhi, but we currently work with students from across the globe. A lot of them from Mumbai in India, a lot of them from Bangalore, a lot of them from Chennai, Okay, so here we go. What is it that we're going to talk about today? Current updates. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, till, till 10th of March, the world was not that bad a place to live in. My students were excitedly looking forward to their 14th of March SAT. It was only about 12th of March that everything started falling about, falling apart. So what has happened till now, we'll, we'll uh, do a quick dipstick on that to update all of you on what the current scenario is. We'll talk about what are the possible scenarios going forward. This is one question I get to hear five times a day. Sir, would the SAT happen in June? Would the ACT happen in June? So I'll try and answer these questions. Uh, what's also happening meanwhile in the background is that lots of colleges are going test optional for this year, most of them, some of them for this year and next year. How is that going to impact and what exactly do we mean by the term test optional? That's what I'm going to talk about. The APs, 
APs have got test at home. So any student who had registered for the AP earlier this year is no longer required to visit a test center, which of course is not possible nowadays. So they'll be able to take the APs at home from whatever part of the world they are in. I'm going to be talking at length about this. What do we do? A lot of people come and tell me, sir, would the SAT be completely abolished for students who are taking i mean admissions to the u.s colleges or other colleges elsewhere in the globe i'm going to talk about that also and finally towards the end we'll talk about how uh, how students can capitalize the lockdown how they can make the most of this lockdown and how they can choose between the sat and the act that's again an often asked question that how do i decide which of the tests do i take and there are lots of myths, you know, spread about this uh, on the marketplace. So people coming and telling me, I don't like science, so I should not take the ACT. Some of them telling me, I'm looking at the US colleges and maybe the ACT is not acceptable there. So all sorts of myths, I'll be blasting them big time towards the end. So here we go. Here we go. Current updates. The March SAT was selectively cancelled in India. So few of the centers, in fact, most of the centers conducted that, but some of the centers in Delhi and Mumbai, they canceled the test at the last moment. Yes, 15th of March, which is two days, two, 16th of March, in fact, two days after uh, the March SAT was conducted, the college board went on to cancel the May SAT because <laughs> they could see that the way the world is shaping up, it would not be possible to conduct this test across the globe without, without major disruptions. And the college board was a bit on the defensive, given the last minute disruptions to the March SAT, which could not be conducted in as many as 35 countries. So, the current communication from College Board goes like this, and which is available on the College Board website, that the May SAT has been cancelled, but the June SAT stays. Now, mind you, June SAT is a full SAT in the US, but is only a subject test across, I mean, internationally, which means in India, you can take this test only as a subject SAT, but not the full SAT. Uh, when is the first available SAT then? The first available SAT for Indian students or for any student testing outside the US is going to be on 29th of August. That is uh, the standard communication from College Board. Also, I tell you, if you talk to your seniors and you talk to people around you, most of them will tell you that after May, the test is going to be conducted in October because that is how it used to be till last year. But this year onwards, uh, the College Board has a planned attempt on 29th of August, which used to happen only in the US earlier, but this year has been extended to international locations as well. And that's an announcement that the College Board made <coughs> in the month of January. Now, if you go to the College Board website, you will not be able to register for this test right now. That's because, <coughs> sorry. That's because the College Board follows an annual cycle that starts in July. So registrations for the August SAT are going to open roughly about the 10th of June as the June SAT happens and not before that. And that's how it happens every year. There is, there is nothing new over here, right? So the current situation may test cancel. If you had registered for the May test, you're going to get an automatic refund. Most of you would have received it by now. Registrations for June subject SATs are still open, which means the College Board is projecting that this test, they will be able to do it. August test registrations are going to start sometimes around the 10th of June. What about ACT? The February ACT was conducted without any problem because by that time the COVID-19 had not really, you know, spread the way it is today. The April ACT has been cancelled, but these students are not being refunded the money. They are being automatically moved to the June test, which is, I think, 13th of June, 12th and 13th of June are the dates. And they will not have to make a fresh registration for June. Their April registration automatically gets transferred to June. 
after june what are the testing options for you for act you have one in july you have one in september one in october and one in december so this is uh, the current situation with regards to the SAT, the ACT, and the SAT subject tests. SAT subject tests, you can take them in June, you can take them in August, you can take them in October. And mind you, any test that you have taken till October is good to be considered for your early applications as well. Advanced placements and TOEFL are tests at home now, which means you can take these tests without having to visit a testing center. You can take them right at your home. I'll be talking about advanced placements at length later on. But TOEFL also is now test at home. Uh, some of the tests that do not really concern you, the GMAT, the GRE, are also test at home. Given the uncertainty, the admission officers at various colleges are more concerned about their admissions rather than the SAT. So all of them have chosen, a lot of them have chosen to alter their admission policy. And considering the student cannot be punished for something that is beyond the student's control, they are going test optional. Now, test optional is a, is a very, very complicated word. We'll have to understand it very well. I'm going to be talking about it again later in the seminar, in the webinar. So uh, test optional is not test exempt. We'll have to understand this word in great detail. It does not mean if a college has gone test optional, it does not mean that it has abolished uh, the consideration for the SAT or the ACT lock, stock and barrel. Okay, moving on. What are the possible scenarios now? So one question which is often asked is, are the subject ACTs in June on? Is the ACT definitely going to be conducted in June? Trust me, nobody can have a definite answer to that, including me, including the president of the college board and including Mr. Donald Trump, because how the situation unfolds would depend upon factors which are beyond everybody's control. So we can only talk about scenarios here. The first scenario is that in another 15 days, things peak out and things start getting back to normal as we've learned from the Chinese example, where after about 75 days of disturbed lifestyles, that city is perfectly back to normal. So if we start from where it started, count three months, then maybe the June test, this is the most optimistic scenario, that the June test would be held as per schedule. Uh, the world would be back to being normal. We'll have commercial economic activities started. The schools still might open a little later, but yes, this is the best possible scenario. This is the most optimistic scenario. A more realistic scenario, the June tests also might be cancelled because education being a sensitive space, as parents, all of us are, are more sensitive about our kids than what we are about ourselves. So taking cognizance of that, if things don't start getting better, let's say by about the first week of May, the college board as well as the ACT may go on to cancel the June tests as well and retain the tests further than that. The worst possible case where even by the middle of May, by the end of May, we, we still feel that we are not really getting anywhere close to the end of the current situation, the end of the virus. Then I'm very confident that both SAT and ACT will be able to develop at home testing options, which should not be a big deal given that so many other people have done it. So today, the GMAT and GRE are test optional. ACT in any case is a computer-based test. It will not take them a lot of effort to convert this to a test at home option by adding some security features. This should be completely within them. Why they're not doing that right now is because they foresee that the current situation is only temporary and this should be okay in the next month, two months at max. So these are the three possible scenarios. Which one would I want? I want to put my money on. I would want to put my money on scenario two, if you ask me. 
but yes scenario one is possible uh, had they thought that they'll not be able to conduct the june test they would have cancelled it by now which is not happening the college board and the act are still very much accepting registrations for the june test if anyone here is planning to take the subject sats my first advice to you would be to go ahead and register for the June subject SAT because these seats are going to fill out really fast. And worse come worse, what will happen that these tests are also cancelled? In this case, you'll get your money refunded or it will get postponed to a future administration. Moving on. What are the test at home options? AP exams, AP exams which are conducted in May every year and there is just one international administration and is also conducted by the college board, the same body that conducts the SAT. So once the pandemic was out of the bag, the college board conducted a survey of 18,000 students in the US that would you want to take the exam or should we abolish it? An overwhelming number of students responded that they want to take the test. And that's where the college board got down to the drawing board. They developed a much shorter version of the test. So the AP exams, which are usually anywhere from 90 minutes to three hours of test, depending upon subject to subject, this year would be done as 45 minutes test only. Also, this test is going to be an open book test, which is which is nothing great to do. There are so many tests in the world which are open book tests because they tend to check you for your reasoning ability, for your analytical skills. And in that sense, trust me, the SAT and ACT being application tests can be can be open book tests any day. It doesn't help any student when you're doing the SAT or the ACT. Even on a mock paper, if I permit it to use all the books at your command, trust me, doesn't, doesn't help you in any way. So the APs are going to be open book tests now. You can, I mean, refer from a book. will be just 45 minute tests. And the best part is you can do them from a variety of devices. You can do them from a laptop. You can do them from a tablet. You can do it from a desktop. You can do it from your mobile phone. That is the kind of flexibility that the college board has given to you. And in terms of results, the results stay at par with the erstwhile APs. So the college board has gone out and conduct and contacted different universities. Practically each of those universities has gone on to say that the same credit will be given for this year's APs as have been given for last year's APs. In no case will a student be penalized for the fact that they have taken an abridged version of the AP. So this is going to be just a 45 minute test, including a five minute break in between. They're gonna be given two questions, one of 25 minutes, then a five minute break, another question of 15 minutes, and they have to, they can type on the screen, they, they can use a pen to write on a tablet, or they could simply write on a paper, click a picture and send it to the college board. So they've given them all options. They say the way we have developed these tests, they are foolproof. They are foolproof. They are foolproof with regards to cheating. If a student copies somewhere from the web and posts an answer, they say we will be able to detect it. Also, considering that you know the situation across the globe is, is variable, so uh, they're giving them two possible dates, either in May or in June. Also, these tests would be conducted across the globe at the same time. So some of us might have to do these tests at very, very awkward hours. For example, one of my students in Hong Kong will have to take her test at two in the morning. But I think that's OK. We can all manage with that so long as the test is being conducted. Moving on, so this is how test at home options, GMAT is test at home now, GRE is test at home now, and these are tests with immense credibility. I mean, they, they, they are the grad school tests for the US. So without wasting any time, they've chosen to go test at home, test online, and they say this is not going to impact the results in any manner whatsoever. All right, moving on now, this one answers 
the simple question from the students that says would the SAT be scraped permanently? The answer is a loud no, a big no. Please understand the College Board is a 120 year old institution. It has survived two world wars, multiple pandemics, including the Spanish flu, but it has stayed because as a nation, the US believes in the power of a standardized test in many more ways. And I've been in touch with so many admission officers personally. They say that, uh, you know, a standardized test makes life easy for them. It gives you a common benchmark. It gives you a common benchmark. I'll take a small example here. Back here in India, one of one of the hot topics of discussion is the Delhi University admissions, which are done purely on the basis of grade 12 marks. Now, what's happening here is for almost two, three years in a row, bulk of the students to Delhi University are coming from one small district in Andhra Pradesh. And back here, my CBSC students, they complain that for that particular board, the testing or the evaluating, evaluation parameters are very different. They're very simple. So somebody who would get a 90% on CBSC would get a 98% on the Andhra Pradesh board. And then they'll walk away with all the seats in Delhi University. This would not be the case had we had a standardized test in place. Imagine students from how many countries apply for admissions to the US. That number would be 200 plus. And there are countries like India, where in the same country, you have got <coughs> roughly 25, 26 different education systems that coexist. Who's going to sit down and equalize all of them? And then how do I know which state board in India has what kind of credibility, what kind of marking schemes? So a standardized test, a SAT or an ACT provides a common benchmark, provides a common benchmark through which students coming from different backgrounds can be evaluated. It makes an admission officer's life simpler. Similarly, you know, you may say we'll apply on the basis of school grades and extracurricular activities. There is no way for them to go and cross check the validity of every single extracurricular activity which has been claimed by the student. They'll never ask you to furnish certificates. They just make out on the basis of what you write in your essays and they're good at that. They would normally make out if somebody is faking hair. The SAT or the ACT is something that you have taken in controlled environment. This is something that they can believe is true. And they're very, very sensitive, you know, to the quality of results that these two tests are generating. Anything that goes wrong with the test, it hits the headlines instantaneously. But the admission officers have a different goal. If I gave you two statements, statement A says, the admission officers want to have the best possible students to their college. And statement B says the admission officers want to have students for their college. Out of statement A and statement B, which is a greater truth? The obvious answer is statement B. The obvious, very obvious answer is statement B. Statement B is a greater truth any day. So it's student first and better students later. So if they were given a choice between having bad students or not so good students or not having students, they'll much prefer going with having not so good students. So how do they react to the situation? They react to the situation by going test optional. So a number of colleges about a dozen odd right now, which is still not a huge number, but the list is adding each day. A number of colleges have gone test optional. We need to understand this term test optional really, really well. Test optional does not mean test exempt. It does not mean that they're not going to look at 
your standardized test scores. And test optional is nothing new. Test optional movement has been around for over 15 years now. There are colleges that have been test optional for as long as 10 years now. But let's understand what do we mean by test optional? It means you have an option whether you want to submit the test score or not. Again, when should I not submit my test course when I can very clearly show that I was not in a position to take a test? Whom does it apply to? It applies to students who are at boarding schools where testing facilities are not available. It applies to sports persons at times, you know, who given their sporting curricula cannot find adequate time to take a standardized test or prepare for it. In the current situation, Test optional will apply to students who, given the coronavirus pandemic, could not take a test because it was not administered in your location. But if you're applying from a city where the test was conducted, where the test was conducted, and uh, you could have taken it from the same school where you are applying, you are applying without the test. There are people who are applying with the test. I mean, you can make it out how the situation would be. So this cannot be taken as an excuse to run away from the test. That is not going to help you. Also, for most of them, for vast majority of them, this exception is being made for one year, given the current year situation. Yes, for some of them have made it for three years also, but that's like one or two names. That's about it. Let's just take a look at uh, what are the colleges. These are some of the colleges. Most of them are liberal arts colleges. So MIT again has retained the SAT and the ACT, but they say that we are deleting the subject test requirement. And that they're doing permanently. They'll not look at it ever. Right? So they've, they've uh, retained the SAT, ACT. They've not gone test optional with respect to SAT, ACT. They've deleted the subject test requirement. Tufts University and Davidson have gone for three years, test optional, not test exempt. Please know that even a single of these universities has not gone test exempt. They've all gone test optional. So imagine if you were living somewhere in the northern part of Italy, where it becomes practically impossible for you to take a test given the current circumstances, then that's going to be a situation where you can still apply to the university without a test and they'll still consider your application at par. I'll be sending you another mail after the webinar that will contain, you know, a, a live uh, link on the test optional colleges as to what all colleges have got test optional. So among the big names, you see University of California going test optional for one year. That's a big, big, very big university. Other than that, mostly, mostly, you know, uh, the Northeastern uh, Scripps College, the more liberal arts colleges here than proper universities. Coming down to the last part of this uh, webinar, how to choose between the SAT and the ACT? That's one question so many students ask me. The good thing is to know the difference between these two tests. That's something all of you will have to work on. And a lot of myths I'm going to blast towards the end. The first thing you must understand is that the two tests are completely replaceable. The two tests are completely replaceable and you can check that with your application counselor, with your school counselor. There is no university across the globe that would accept one of these and say no to the other one. They're completely replaceable. So you've got to take a test that you are most suited to. Please do not be driven by peer pressure. My friends are doing it. Please do not be driven by any of the myths that science students are supposed to do ACT. That's completely untrue. Students who do not have science are supposed to do the SAT. Completely untrue. Not required. Students who are applying for engineering must do the ACT. All of them are blatant myths. Please do not believe any of them. Please do not believe any of them. Okay, so there's one question. I'll take all the questions towards the end. Uh, 
Fundamentally, SAT is a test of reasoning and logic. It gives you more time. The time per question on the SAT is 70 seconds. ACT is a test of your speech. So it's more like a T20 game, whereas the SAT is more like a one day international game. ACT would give you only 49 seconds per question to respond. So ACT wants you to have far more speed. The primary you know, skill that is being tested here is speed. Uh, the primary skill that is being tested on the SAT is your ability to reason your ability to apply logic to situations it's a test of reasoning essentially will give you more time uh, the second thing the syllabus is limited for the sat and 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 is is from a general direction so a large number of questions here especially on math are stuff that you can you can solve on pure common sense right whereas the act would have a larger syllabus for math it will tend to be more curricular it will tend to be more curricular. It will be closer to what you study in your grade uh, 11 uh, on, on, on school. There will be multiple topics from there. That said, it will have simpler questions. The SAT might have slightly complicated questions, which is true for both reading and math. SAT reading is slightly complicated. You might be required to read between the lines at times. You might be required to, you know, um, try and align yourselves with the author's thought at times. Uh, ACT is going to be very flat. So answers to most of the questions would be given on the passages itself. It is just that you have too many questions and too many passages to be done in too little a time. So please do check, you know, your reading speed. If your reading speed is good, probably that's one factor in favor of the ACT. If it is not good, that's a factor in favor of the SAT, right? Uh, another factor here is that the SAT has two math sections, one with calculator, one without calculator. The ACT has only one math section, which is with the calculator. So those of you who are very comfortable using a graphing calculator, that is going to be an advantage over the with the ACT. What I would recommend here, you know, is, is that never self-medicate here. Never decide based on what you think or what your peers think. Always take this decision based on data. So do a diagnostic test for the SAT and for the ACT. And please also understand that ACT is a computer-based test. SAT is a paper-based test. Right? If you are very uncomfortable working on screen, which most people from your generation are not, then maybe you know that will be one factor in favor of the SAT. If you have done the diagnostics, any diagnostic for the ACT which has been done on paper is meaningless. Is meaningless. So if you downloaded a paper somewhere from the website, any website, and solved that at home and calculated your score of the ACT, I mean, that's not the way it is supposed to be done. If you're doing the stand, I mean, diagnostic tests, they must be externally administered. That's extremely important. Couple of myths. Some colleges will prefer the SAT to the ACT. That's completely untrue. ACT is more suited to science because it has a science section. Correct, it has a science section, but any of you who has done the ACT diagnostic would know that the science on the ACT is not science at all. That's actually a test of data comprehension, which is set in an environment of science. So what I would need you guys to have is that you should have studied all three sciences till grade 10. If you have not studied all three sciences in grade 10 and you're missing sciences, either a biology or a chemistry, do not even look at the ACT. But if you have done all three sciences till grade 10, and you're not opting for sciences in grade 11 and 12, that does not make any difference. You're not going to be needing anything from your science in grade 11 and 12 there. So, I mean, again, even engineering universities would not differentiate whether you've done the SAT or the ACT. The two tests are completely replaceable. The two tests are completely replaceable right and last but not the least 
any diagnostic test which you take without externally administered time limits is meaningless. If you did the diagnostic test by yourselves, that's absolutely meaningless, right? We'll be glad to offer you free of cost diagnostics right at your home. I'll talk about them later. Uh, the last item for the webinar, I've taken a lot of your time today and all of you have been a very, very patient audience throughout. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, how to capitalize on the lockdown? So the exams have been canceled for IGCSC for IB. CBSC and ICSC exams halted midway and we do not have any clarity when these exams would be conducted again. As per if I go with a release from the CBSC last evening, they have made it amply clear that these exams will be conducted for grade 12 only, which means although they have not said that explicitly, we'll have to wait for further clarifications. But last evening, late last evening, CBSC issued a statement that the balance exams would be done for grade 12 only. The rest of the students would be promoted on the basis of the exams that they have done or on the basis of their performance at school. So which means as students, you have an, if CBSC does that, trust me, the ICSC is going to follow suit very, very shortly. I mean, after that, maybe by Monday or Tuesday at max, we'll have, we'll have a categoric, you know, choice on that. So the idea is that, sorry, idea is that you have a lot of time with you right now with nothing to be done. So make sure that you make the most of this time do the bulk of your SAT, SAT, ACT prep right now when you have time for it. And one thing that differentiates the SAT and ACT from your school preps is that these are not content-based preps. All of them has very, very little content. So you don't risk forgetting things here. No, it's like driving a car. It's like driving a car. If I learn how to drive today and I become an expert driver in the next three months and I don't drive for the next two months, do you think you're going to forget that? I don't think so. I'm sure you also don't think so. So use this time to work towards a standardized test. The world is going to get back to normal in the next month, two months, three months. That's about it. So I don't want that at that point in time, we should look back and tell ourselves, oh, we had the time. We, we could have done things. We did not do it. Now with the schools open, so much of homework, so much of assignments, co-curriculars. Right now, when you're locked down, there's nothing you can do. You can't go to the school. You can't work on the school curriculum also. You cannot do a social service. You cannot do a live project. Now some online projects can be done, but that's about it. Schools are offering online classes, but even then, wherever online classes are being offered, the workload on the students is a fraction of what it used to be. So please make sure that you make the most of this time and finish off at least 90% of your SAT prep here itself or ACT prep here itself. We offer free of cost diagnostic tests and a test choice consultation to all participants of this webinar. How you can do that, you can write to me on WhatsApp or you can visit my website or you can email us at this address and we'll get back to you. We'll schedule a couple of diagnostic tests for each student and post the time the diagnostic tests have been done. Uh, we, we would be, uh, you know, uh, looking at what would be the correct test choice for you. So thanks a lot for being such a patient audience. I'll be taking up your questions now. I've got quite a few. Okay. I'll, I'll take each of the questions now. That is put my way in the next 20 minutes. Says, can the SAT be conducted online? Yes, why not? And SAT has the technology. Khan Academy are the official partners. They have the online engine. I don't think it will take more than 10 days for them to come up with an online version. It won't take more than that. Right. Okay, one more question here. Will the with test applicants be preferred over without test ones? Oh, that's a dicey one. That's a dicey one. Uh, with test applicants would be preferred over without test ones if both of them had an equal opportunity to do the test. 
if you can show that you did not get an adequate opportunity to test and that is why you are applying without a test score, you will not be penalized for it. Okay, one more question. I'm in grade nine. Is it possible for me to attempt mock SATs and ACTs? Why not? You can always do the diagnostic. Now, whether or not you should start prepping right now, that's a million dollar question. We would be uh, taking care of that once we take a look at the diagnostic test course. But yes, you can definitely do a diagnostic. No problem at all. Is a diagnostic test a reliable way of choosing the right test? I think that's the only way of choosing the right test diagnostic tests and allowing an expert to interpret the test course for you. So there are certain areas which are more tutorable. There are certain areas which are less tutorable and less prone to improvement. For example, the ACT reading section, you know, which is a simple test based on reading speed. So speed, if you don't have it today, you'll find it very difficult to cultivate it in the next three months. So do the diagnostic tests very, very diligently, very, very honestly. Uh, we do them all online with externally administered time limits. We have a very, very stable engine to do that. In fact, our ACT testing platform is identical to the software that the actual ACT guys use. So you'll be able to take the test in an environment which is identical to you know, uh, what you get to see on the test date on the ACT. So that's a reliable way. I mean, that's the only way to decide. The only thing here, you know, is, is, is that you should have taken the tests very honestly. You should not have taken them casually. So if you take the tests casually, that is going to be a problem. Uh, one more. How long have you been doing online prep? We've been doing online prep for almost five years now. We are the pioneers of online test prep in India. We've got our structures, processes, everything in place, and we do one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody, now that there's a lockdown, everybody has started online prep. I'm, I'm sorry to observe, none of them actually knows it. People are doing online in groups. It doesn't work that way. And they've been forced to do online doing it whatever they want to we are exclusive online prep we do not work with a batch anywhere we only do online and we are very well versed with this medium that's how we have developed this product if you want to take a look at my results you can visit my website uh, but yes we work with a very limited number of students we work with a high degree of personalization and we work with a lot of passion we have a team of very competent, very qualified, very trained and experienced tutors. And we have a very, very strong admin team with us. So it's almost round the clock support. Uh, one more question. Should I take the test in August or October? I think your diagnostic tests would decide that. Take a diagnostic test and we'll figure out. We'll discuss that uh, with you on a one on one basis. Is the entire program conducted online? Yes, most of it, almost 90%. Now we do a couple of sessions in groups, especially, but that is meant for students who are not made, able to make the most of first round, have visible gaps even after first round. We choose to do a few makeup group classes for them later on, but yes, the program is by and large one-on-one. -on -one. What should I do to take the free diagnostic test with you? You can, I mean, uh, write to me, you can WhatsApp me, any of these and we'll get back to you with the process. Please remember that there are two tests of three hours each to be taken here. The two tests must be taken on two different days and not on the same day, which is not recommended. Any questions? Any more? Thanks for being such a lovely audience. I hope all of you enjoyed the webinar. Any more questions, you can pass them to me right now. Okay, thank you so much. I'll wait for another minute. And if we do not have any questions, I'll be ending this webinar.
thanks a lot everyone i hope you enjoyed the presentation we'll keep you informed about uh, further developments happening at our place what all we have to offer and uh, i'll be sending you a mail shortly that it contain a couple of blog links thank you have a great day stay safe stay home thank you so much thank you bye bye